This is the Iran Aircraft Manufacturing Industrial Company, Shahed 136, a drone of Iranian origin. It is simple and cheap to produce, costing somewhere between twenty and fifty thousand dollars. Russia uses thousands in the war against Ukraine. Looking at it like this, can you imagine the damage it can cause? Most people have no idea. Pay attention to this. One drone, one impact. This is the result. Now, imagine this daily. Ukraine has been facing this reality since the beginning of the war. Waves of drones, dozens, sometimes over 50 at once, attack cities, hospitals, and power plants. And on some of the worst days of this war, Russia even launched more than 800 drones in massive coordinated attacks against targets all over Ukraine. But something changed. The United Kingdom and Ukraine have just announced a partnership that could turn this Russian advantage into a deadly trap for Moscow. They found out how to use Putin's own strategy against him. Now, let me ask you something. Do you know why these drones have become such a big problem? Why are they so devastating? The answer has nothing to do with advanced technology. It has to do with math. Every time a Shahed crosses the Ukrainian sky, Ukraine has to make an impossible decision. It can use a sophisticated interceptor missile, like a Patriot which costs $4 million. Or a German infrared imaging system, TAIL, CFI, Artesiau. A thrust vector controlled, which costs about $450,000. Or a Norwegian advanced surface to air missile system, which is over a million. Think about it. A $30,000 drone forces the use of a $4 million missile. Russia could lose 100 drones and still benefit from this exchange. But there's an even worse detail. Russia doesn't send these drones one at a time. They send them in waves. 10, 20, 50 at the same time. This forces Ukraine to fire multiple expensive missiles just to try to intercept them all. And here's the real problem. The stockpiles of these missiles are limited. Their production is slow, expensive, and complicated. Meanwhile, Russia is churning out shaheds by the thousands at a factory in Alabuga, Tatarstan. Putin has figured out how to wage a war of attrition in the sky, not through technological superiority, but through pure economic mathematics. Each night of attacks drains a little more from Ukraine's reserves. It's a strategy designed to eventually leave Ukraine without defenses. And when that happens, the expensive and limited missile systems will have to be used against even more dangerous threats. Cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, fighter jets, leaving critical infrastructure completely vulnerable to Shahed's. It's a very unfavorable equation for those who are defending. In other words, for Ukraine. But now, the winds have started to blow in their favor because the United Kingdom and Ukraine have just completely changed this equation. They are jointly developing a project called Octopus. And the name is not accidental, like an octopus. It was designed to have multiple arms, attacking simultaneously, able to adapt quickly and regenerate if necessary. Let me explain to you exactly what this octopus project is, because it's impressive. In a few words, they're drones, interceptors, small, fast, deadly. And most importantly, they're cheap. Each one costs between ten and twenty thousand dollars. Let me repeat that. Ten to twenty thousand dollars. The same price as a Shah head. Suddenly, the math that favored Moscow turns against it. These interceptors were specifically designed for one thing. Hunting Shaheds. They don't carry heavy bombs. They don't need to. They're built for speed, 
agility, and precision. The goal is simple. Detect, pursue, and destroy enemy drones before they reach their targets. Some use direct collision. Others carry small explosive charges. Some even have the ability to disable the drone in mid-flight using electronic attacks. But the real difference lies in the reaction speed. These systems use artificial intelligence combined with optical sensors and radar data to make decisions in seconds. When a swarm of Shahids is detected, interceptors can be launched from nearby positions guided by a digital defense network that covers all of Ukraine. And here's the brilliant part of the partnership. Ukraine knows how to make drones. Ukrainian engineers have spent the last few years designing, modifying, and testing everything from small quadcopters to long-range drones. They have something that no Western defense company has, real combat experience. But there's a problem. Ukraine doesn't have mass production capability. It doesn't have the supply chain. It doesn't have the factories. And that's where the United Kingdom comes in. British companies like Prevail Partners and Techover have the industrial capacity to produce reliable hardware at scale. They provide the factories, the funding, and the logistics. Ukraine provides the designs, the battle data, and the technical expertise that only combat experience can give. It's a perfect fusion, and the result? Production of about 2,000 drones per month. 2,000 interceptor drones every month, coming off British production lines, ready to be sent to Ukraine. But there's something even more impressive happening here, something that goes beyond production numbers. It's what the military calls a feedback loop. Let me explain. Look, a drone is designed based on the immediate needs of the battlefield. It's produced in the United Kingdom with industrial precision, sent to Ukraine, used in real combat. The performance data is collected, modifications are made, and in a matter of weeks, not years, an improved version is being produced. That's not how a military acquisition normally works. In reality, it takes years, sometimes decades. The bureaucracy is huge, complicated contracts, not to mention the endless testing. But now we're talking about just a few weeks. The truth is that Ukraine has become a real-time laboratory for military innovation, and the United Kingdom has become the industrial arm of that laboratory. Now, let's talk about what that really means. First, the immediate impact. With thousands of cheap interceptors in the sky, Ukraine can finally defend its critical infrastructure without draining its stocks of expensive missiles. Power plants are protected, hospitals keep running. The power grid remains stable even during the winter attacks that Russia uses to try to freeze the Ukrainian population into surrender. The Patriot and Iris T systems can finally be reserved for what they were designed for. High priority threats, hypersonic missiles, ballistic missiles, advanced fighter jets. The layered air defense architecture, which had been distorted by the Russian drone campaign, is restored to its original purpose. But there's something else happening here. Something Moscow didn't expect. Russia went all in on this strategy of economic attrition. It built factories, established production lines, trained operators, developed tactics. All based on the premise that Ukraine wouldn't be able to sustain its defense. Now that premise is collapsing and there is evidence that the Kremlin is already worried. Disinformation channels linked to Russia have started spreading fake news saying that the Octopus Project was cancelled. They wouldn't do that if they didn't see it as a real threat. Now, Russia will have to adapt. Maybe they'll develop faster Shaheds, more stealthy, more resistant to electronic interference. 
Or maybe they'll be forced to increase the use of cruise and ballistic missiles, which are much more expensive and whose stockpiles are even more limited. Clearly, the dynamic has shifted. The hunter is now the hunted. But the impact of this project goes far beyond Ukraine. Why the United Kingdom? Well, it's positioning itself strategically. After Brexit, London needed to show that it is still an indispensable leader in European security, even outside the European Union's defense structures. The Octopus Project does exactly that. By leading this initiative, the United Kingdom places itself at the center of European defense against Russian threats. And it does this practically, not just rhetorically. In addition, this collaboration is turning parts of the United Kingdom into the European Center for Combat Drone Technology. Ukrainian companies such as UKR Spec Systems are investing in British territory. Hundreds of specialized jobs are being created. A new class of advanced defense products is being developed. It's industrial strategy disguised as military support. And there's more. These drones won't stop in Ukraine. NATO is watching all of this very closely. The Alliance is planning something called the European Drone Wall, a continental air defense system designed to protect NATO's eastern border against Russian incursions. And guess which technology is being considered as the backbone of this system? The Octopus Drones, British technology based on Ukrainian combat doctrine protecting all of Europe. This puts the United Kingdom at the heart of NATO's future defense architecture. But perhaps the most profound impact is on a problem that NATO faces, and that is already well known. Its procurement processes are slow, bureaucratic, and expensive. It takes years, sometimes decades, for new systems to go from the drawing board to the battlefield. The Octopus Project demonstrates a different model an agile model based on immediate operational needs. With the rapid feedback loops I mentioned earlier and close collaboration between government and industry and between allies, it's what some analysts are calling agile acquisition. This could potentially redefine how NATO develops future military capabilities. As you can see, the war in Ukraine is serving as the biggest laboratory for military innovation since World War II. And, thanks to the partnership with the United Kingdom, the lessons learned are not getting stuck in confidential reports. They are being immediately turned into ready-to-use technology. Drones have now stopped being part of the problem and have become part of the solution. They are saving lives protecting infrastructure and changing the balance of power in the Ukrainian sky. And here's something that many people don't realize, because what's going on? It's not just about today. It's about 10, 20, 50 years from now. Ukraine and the United Kingdom did not sign a temporary aid deal. They signed a hundred year partnership. Yes, you heard that right, a hundred years. This means that when this war ends, and it will end someday, Ukraine will have a robust domestic defense industry. It will be able to produce next generation technology to defend itself independently. The United Kingdom is not just helping Ukraine survive, it's helping to build a Ukraine that can thrive. A Ukraine that will be a strong, independent, strategic partner for generations. And that's something Russia can't destroy with bombs or propaganda. Russia thought it had found a perfect weapon. Cheap drones that would force Ukraine to spend a fortune to defend itself. A weapon of attrition warfare that couldn't be defeated. But they underestimated something fundamental. The ability to adapt. Ingenuity under pressure and the power of genuine partnerships between nations that share values. In the coming months, we will see the results of this project become increasingly clear. Production will increase, the interceptors will prove their effectiveness, and Russia will have to decide whether to keep playing a game it can no longer win. The sky over Ukraine is shifting, possibly altering the war's outcome. 
Now, tell me, what did you think of this project? Had you heard about it before? Leave your opinion in the comments. If this video made you think differently about the war, share it with someone who needs to see this. And subscribe to the channel for more analyses like this. See you next time.